Hello, I'm Seamus Dunhu, and this is a Let's Play video of myself running Conflict Zones in Elite Dangerous. Today is Easter Sunday, April 1st, 2018. Happy Easter, happy April Fool's Day. Uh, this video is aimed at two audiences. Uh, first, players who do not know anything about Conflict Zones whatsoever and want to see a demonstration of how precisely they work. And second, players who are interested in how I, in particular, like to run conflict zones. So first of all, uh, I'm going to cover a lot of background, because I tend to aim my videos at very new players for any particular game that I'm showing off. Uh, conflict zones... Actually, let me first explain. Uh, Elite, Elite Dangerous is filled with lots and lots of minor factions. Uh which are part of Elite Dangerous's background simulation. Uh, so lots of these minor powers uh, spread out throughout the bubble of human inhabited space. Um, so in this particular solar system, I'm in um, Ross 310 right now, uh, there are, I believe, seven minor factions, and they have procedurally generated names. Um, partially composed of the solar system of origin. So I've got United Ross 310 Progressive Party, uh, Green Party of Wolf 10, Ross 310 Natural Services, Bumper Purple Central Limited, Ross 310 Focus, and so on. Most of these factions are native to this solar system, uh, so they all have Ross 310 as part of their name. A couple of these factions, however, have spread into this solar system from elsewhere, so Bumber Purple Central Limited uh, is based in the Bumber solar system. Green Party of Wolf 10 is based in the Wolf 10 solar system. Now sometimes these minor factions get into fights with each other, which triggers e either wars or civil wars. Uh, and really the only difference between these two is that a civil war will be uh, between two minor factions in their own native solar system such as this civil war between Ross 310 Natural Services and Ross 310 Cartel. Since they're both native to the solar system, that makes it a civil war. Never mind the fact that Cartel is an independent anarchy and Ross 310 Natural Services is a corporation aligned with uh, the Interstellar Federation. If one of these factions were from outside the solar system, or both of them were from outside the solar system, that would make it just a war rather than a civil war. But it doesn't really make a difference either way. Uh, whenever there's a war going on, or a civil war, uh, you will see... Well, when you're in space, uh, you will see conflict zones show up in the navigation panel. Uh, they're not visible right now because I think I just logged into the game. Um, so I'm going to have to undock before these become visible again. Uh, but if you're in space, uh, then you can see conflict zones within 1,000 light seconds of you. Uh, from earlier, my earlier walking around in the solar system, or flying around in the solar system, I know there are conflict zones near planet 1 and planet 5. Um, so I'll show you that once I undock. Um, so you can super cruise over to a conflict zone. Uh, drop out of super cruise. And then in your right-hand panel, the Functions tab, you can select Faction, and choose one of the two factions that you want to fight on behalf of. The other faction you're going to be shooting at. And then you start blowing up ships. Uh, and as you do that, you're going to accumulate combat bond vouchers. And eventually you will want to come back to Station, uh, go to the Contacts section, uh, the Combat Hold on, let me get rid of This is irrelevant. Let me get rid of that. You'll want to go to the Combat Bond contact and cash in the Combat Bond vouchers that you have. All right. <laughs> and that's uh, the primary means... Uh, well, that's uh, the built-in means of making money from participating in conflict zones. That option will always be available to you. There, are, there can be a couple of other complications that can get involved. Um, first of all... And they both show up on the mission board. Um, if you go to the mission board for the faction that's involved in the war, for example, I've been working for Ross 310 Natural Services, 
they will have massacre contracts for the opposing faction. Or sometimes they will have massacre contracts for the, uh, to kill the opposing faction. Um, so I can go to any of these contracts. Uh, so destroy 48 ships from Ross 310 cartel faction. Find your targets in the conflict zones of the Ross 310 system. Uh, and they'll pay me, and they'll give me a, a choice of rewards for that mission. So either money or cargo and money or uh, a lesser amount of money and I can increase the minor faction's influence in the solar system, make them more prominent in the background simulation, if I care about that sort of thing. Uh, so I can... And this reward is on top of whatever combat bonds uh, that you get uh, from the direct participation itself. Uh, the other complication that comes into play is that sometimes frontier developments will make a particular war or civil war part of a pair of opposing community goals. So there are two opposed community goals here, one to support uh, natural services and one to support the cartel. When community goals are opposed... Uh, hold on, let me talk about the community goals themselves. So as you turn in combat bonds, this number up here... Um, is going to go up. That's your contribution to the community goal. And the community goal will progress to whatever tier based on how many other players, whether they're in open or in private group or solo play, um, how many other players also contribute to com uh, combat bonds. Uh, make sure you sign up for the community goal first before you go to the contact section. So sign up for the community goal first. And uh, when a community goal either times out on the next following Thursday, or uh, on the next Thursday to roll around, or it hits tier 8, uh, then the community goal is over and you cannot participate in that community goal any further. Um, and if you were participating in it, then you will receive uh, an extra bonus based on what tier the community goal reached, Right now it's tier 6 as I'm recording this, but I expect it to hit tier 8 before Thursday. As well as what uh, bracket you fall into. So I'm in the top 25% of contributors. So I've contributed more in combat bonds than 75% uh, of all other players who also signed up for this community goal. Now, when two community goals are opposed like this, only one community goal is going to get those rewards. So people who sign up for the cartel and are trying to turn in combat bonds for the cartel, they're not going to get any of these bonuses whatsoever. Because the cartel is probably going to lose that war. Um, players have rightly pointed out that this does lead to a snowball effect once either side is in the lead. Um... A lot more play. Uh, a lot of other players are just going to pile on to that side because they want their bonus rewards, and you're only going to get that right now if you're going to get work for natural services. So that is uh, a that is a game design issue at the moment. Um, but yeah, that's the other means of uh, that's the third means of making money off of a war or a civil war. So that's the combat bonds, the massacre missions, and the community goal bonus. If there is a community goal attached to a particular war or civil war. Uh, if you look at the in-game galaxy map, um, the community goal will be marked with this. Uh, the community goal will be marked with this uh, yellow icon. Why did I set a course? I did not mean to do that. The community goal will be marked with this yellow icon. Oh, give me a break. There. The community goal will be marked with this yellow icon. This thing right here. Alright, um... But at any given moment in time, there are lots of other conflict zones going on uh, in the galaxy. Uh, so you can go to um, State, and you can search for War and Civil War. And wherever you see these green or orange dots, 
those are solar systems where at least one war or civil war is currently taking place right now, and they will have conflict zones. And chances are pretty good that they'll also have massacre missions. It's just that none of them also have a community goal attached to them. So it doesn't have to be this particular war that you can participate in. Um, there are many other wars that could be going on at any given... Uh, there are lots of other wars that are going on at any given time. I'm going to talk very, very briefly about my ship setup. I'm using an Alliance Chieftain. Um, utility mounts are all heat sink launchers, uh, engineered for uh, ammo capacity. So they have four heat sinks each instead of three. Um, just as a note, um, in terms of Elite Dangerous progression, I'm a rather advanced player. Um, so I can obtain any ship uh, and outfit it. Uh, I also have level 5 access to all of the engineers, uh, which obviously implies I also have Elite Dangerous Horizons. Uh, so in terms of progression, I'm a very advanced player. Uh, I am not much of a PvPer, though, which is why I'm in usually in solo play or my own private group. Um, I don't play in open unless I'm conducting a fuel rats rescue. Um, cores are generally uh, out A rated. Uh, optionals, I've got a 6 Charlie biweave shield generator engineered with thermal resistant shields and fast charge. It cuts on my uh, kinetic resistance considerably, but it patches my thermal uh, resistance hole, so I'm not going to take uh, as much damage from lasers. I expect to get hit with a lot of lasers. Um, shield cell banks are engineered rapid charge shield cell grade 3 uh, with recycling cell. Uh, let me get back to the hard points in a moment. Uh, I'm For my armor, I'm using military grade composite. Engineered with lightweight armor, grade 5, and layered plating. Uh, for my hard points, most of my weapons are gimbaled burst lasers, because most of the time I cannot aim. And I have a single fixed 3-Charlie uh, beam laser, uh, because sometimes I can aim. My gimbaled burst lasers, I use focused weapon grade 5 and oversized uh, experimental frect for a little more ex uh, damage. Uh, but the focused weapon is to give me a little bit more range, uh, as well as increase the armor piercing rating. Uh, and for those of you who are new to Elite Dangerous, what armor piercing means, every ship has a hull hardness rating, uh, which cannot be changed. This ranges between 20 for Sidewinders and Haulers, all the way up to 75 for Type 10 Defenders. Um, as, an, as an example in between, Federal Assault Ships and Federal Gunships have a hull hardness rating of 60. So if your weapons, if you're shooting at a target whose shields are down, or it doesn't have shields in the first place for whatever reason, then your weapon's armor piercing is compared to the target's hull hardness rating. So if you're using armor, if you're using this one golf uh, burst laser against a sidewinder whose hull hardness rating is 20, well the armor piercing matches the hull hardness. So your burst laser will do its actual advertised amount of damage against that sidewinder, minus whatever uh, resistances the sidewinder has against thermal damage. If you're shooting a federal assault ship that has a hull hardness rating of 60, well, your armor piercing rating is only one third of that, so there's going to be a one third multiplier thrown in on your weapon's damage. Right. So small weapons tend to have a hard time. Uh, weapons with a small weapons have tend to have a hard time doing damage to the armor of medium and large ships. So that's what that armor piercing and the hull hardness rating is about. Focused Weapon uh, increases this, which is the primary reason why I chose Focused Weapon for most of my burst lasers. The beam laser is a little different. Uh, long range weapon grade 5 with thermal vent, so as long as I'm hitting a target, it cools down my ship. Um, and I'll show you in action uh, what, that, what I use that for. Uh, but enough about the loadout. Uh, if you want to see more details about the loadout, I've 
written it into the video description below. Uh, let me actually demonstrate how I'm going to do this. I've already signed up for the community goal, obviously, because uh, I've been shooting cartel ships. Why is the mission board taking so long? Here we go. Uh, da, 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 here we go. Ross 310 Natural Services. Um, I'm at this point allied with Ross 310 Natural Services. In actual practice, I would take one of the missions that would have me destroy 90 ships for 10.7 million credits. So that comes out to um, at least... Uh, I, I think that's 100... Trying to do the math in my head. I think that's around 110,000 credits per kill uh, on average. I don't want to take up that much time. That would take me 75 minutes. For the sake of this video, I'm going to take the um, massacre mission that has the smallest number of required kills, uh, which is only 48 ships. That'll only take me about, oh, 35, 40 minutes or so. Uh, so let me accept this one. Uh, and return to surface. My shield cells. Alright, yeah. So those are loaded. Why is this priority one? Oh, there we go. That should be. Alright, yeah. Alright. And launch. Docking clamps retracted. Observe queuing system when exiting the station. Thank you, Control. Alright. Radar says everything's all head ahead of clear. Why do I have a hyperspace target set? All right, uh, I'm going to cut the recording here, and I will pick up the recording when I reach the conflict zone. So off screen, in between the start of this video and now, I've already killed uh, 30. Uh, mission targets, uh, and having really bad luck of it, it's been really slow going. It's taken me about 40 minutes already so far. So I decided just to cut that out completely and just start this recording over from here. So now that I'm in a conflict zone, here's where my fixed beam laser comes into play. Uh, now, fixed weaponry has a very subtle aiming assist feature. If I can get my yellow uh, targeting dot for the beam laser inside that tiny little red box, then it will lock onto the center of that box and hit the target exactly. In this case, uh, that would be the shield generator. Whether or not it actually does damage to the shield generator depends on how the ship is target ship is oriented relative to me. So if I'm having to shoot through three quarters the length of the ship in order to hit that shield generator, I probably won't be hitting the shield generator. Uh, and you probably noticed when I dropped in, first one of the things I did was go to the functions tab and select a faction. Uh, and I selected Natural Services because that's who I'm fighting on behalf of. So the green contacts are Ross 310 Natural Services, the red contacts are Ross 310 Cartel. Now every one of these ships that dies where I shot it sometime in the past minute before it exploded, or at least I guess it's a minute, I know there's some sort of time threshold, but every of these red contacts that explodes that I had shot at uh, within the last minute, I'm guessing, before it exploded, uh, I get a combat bond, which the value of that you'll see in the upper right corner. Observe, 41,400 credits. Now, if my ship explodes, then that combat bond is invalidated. Your combat bond vouchers, your bounty vouchers, 
uh, your uncached exploration data, any intel packages you have, all of that is invalidated when your ship explodes. Even if you would turn to a station, switch ships, neglected to cache any of that in, and then your ship exploded, it will still be invalidated. So be aware of that. However, for the Massacre missions, you still get to keep the kill count on the mission. So you'll have, we still have that income. But for the combat bonds, and also additionally for the community gold contribution to, with combat bonds, you need to get your ship out intact. Or at least with 1% hull. And get back to a landing pad where you can cash in these bonds. Now for ordinary combat bonds, you, where it's not tied to a community goal, you can turn those in at any station or, or outpost. Um, but for the community goal, you have to make sure you turn in the combat bonds at the specific station for the community goal. Reds on the field. I don't like this. Um, I'm gonna go after easy targets that I can kill by myself and hopefully thin the herd or thin the pack. Also, in times gone by, in previous versions of Elite Dangerous, I would aim for the um, power plant because knocking out the power plant would paralyze the NPC. That doesn't seem to be the case anymore. Uh, I'm guessing it's a bug. Uh, players have been complaining about it, but Frontier hasn't fixed it as yet. Uh, today, again, today is April the 1st, 2018, and Northern Sonata will lose joke. have shown up. That's good. Alright, his shield generator's out. With the shield generator out, at least that prevents the NPC from getting its shields back. turret fire. He's not even facing it. Uh, federal dropship is not typically a good choice to engage alone. Shield generator out. Let me try to go find a power distributor. I don't know if that does any good or not. I, I don't think it'll stop his weapons from firing, but we'll see. I've started to suspect recently that NPCs are a different sort of beast from players, and that they don't actually go through the same simulation that player ships do. Target, let me take that out first. He's shooting at me. 
Python. I think that was the green that dropped uh, next to me. Always be very suspicious of um, FSD drops that occur near you. Pay attention to the sounds. Because if there's a whole bunch of new reds showing up, uh, they're going to shoot you. Now this is a good battle situation. I've got at least seven different greens shooting the same red here. And if I can keep this up long term, this is where you can really make money quickly in the conflict zones. As compared to other combat conditions in a conflict zone. Probably an irrelevant mission offer. So I had seven greens all shooting the same red, then four new reds showed up right nearby. Now they're all spread out all over the place. I need to thin the numbers again. So he needs to hold up. There he is. away from him. That should keep him in front of me. There, he's dead. Type 9s, also known as Battle Cows, although 
maybe type 10 defenders and move about new battle cow these days. Type 9s are not particularly maneuverable. Under attack. So it's easy to stay out from in front of them, usually. So we'll be coming back up. Warning. Temperature critical. Now someone once did once test this actually from what I've heard. Knock out an NPC's life support and five minutes later it'll die. will help me kill him as soon as I get rid of this vulture. There. Three more and I'm done. Alright, I'm gonna pick off an eagle then. attention of the battle cow. Under attack. Oh, he's at low armor. He's running away from me. Oh, he's dead. There, oh, there's another eagle. That should be easy. Under 
attack. Now, my alternative for the fixed beam laser is a plasma accelerator, which I have engineered for long range, but that's more to increase the shock speed. Incoming mission All right, I'm message. done. Time to get out of here. Frame shift drive charging. So let's see what these other things were. Delivery contract, no. Delivery contract, no. Don't want to do that. Uh, and the mission is successful. So, return to Mori Port. So that was an abbreviated view of uh, running conflict zones in Ross 310 today. Uh, so just to review real quick. Uh, whenever there is a war or civil war going on, and there are lots of those in the bubble of human inhabited space, uh, you can just drop in, pick a side, uh, again that's the functions tab, faction, and choose which faction you want to fight on behalf of, those will be your greens. So you're choosing your greens from the functions tab. Shoot some reds, blow up some reds, return to a starport or outpost before your ship blows up, and turn in the combat bombs. Right? And I have 1.5 million credits worth of combat bombs to turn in. Uh, since there's a community goal also in effect for this particular civil war, that means that my contribution to the community goal will also go up by 1.5 million credits if I get back to station to turn in these combat bombs. And for that purpose, I need to return to Mori port specifically, not simply just any port where Ross 310 natural services happens to be present. For the purposes of the community goal, I have to turn in these combat bombs at Mori port specifically. But for any other war or civil war, doesn't matter. Uh, and finally, also, I have this mission... Um, to massacre Ross 310 cartel ships, uh, which I've also done. I've killed 40 of them, 48 of them. Uh, and I will be paid, depending on, well, at least 2.3 million credits, depending on which reward I choose. I'm not going for the Y. Flying while drunk is not a good idea. Control. All right. So, contacts, combat bond contact. I'm at Mori Port. So I got paid my 1.531 million credits, and my contribution to community goal has also gone up by 1.531 million credits. Uh, finally, mission board. Here we go. Uh, I will pick the biotech conductors in 2.3 million credits. All right. So yeah, that should be an explanation of um, conflict zones and demonstration how to do them. Now I'm using an Alliance Chieftain, which is of course a rather high-end vessel. Um, it is possible to participate in community goals uh, in sorry in conflict zones. It's possible to participate in conflict zones with a smaller vessel. 
Um, I wouldn't try anything smaller than a Cobra Mark III. Uh, because the smaller the ship, uh, the more fragile you are, and um, if multiple reds start shooting you all at once, your small vessel might vaporize rather quickly. Um, no matter what size of ship you're going to be flying, expect to take a bit of a beating. So the smaller your vessel, the more you're going to need to rely on movement to not get hit. Um... And the more and the quicker you're going to need to be on the ball about getting out of trouble. So noticing when there are multiple reds around you or when the reds outnumber the greens. Uh, so you definitely have to be more cautious. It's still possible, um, but it's trickier. Um, if you have friends in Elite Dangerous, you can form a wing with them. Uh, and having uh, actual buddies... Uh, who will help you kill the same target, who can focus fire with you, um, will probably help a great deal. Um, but if you're operating solo, um, probably your third, first priority would be thin the number of reds, pick off the easier targets like eagles, cobras, ass scouts, asp explorers, um, and then try to find situations where multiple greens are shooting the same red which can be a little bit tricky, so definitely you'll want to go into the options, controls, uh, targeting, and make sure you set key bindings for cycle, next hostile, previous hostile, uh, next subsystem, previous subsystem. All right. But yeah, uh, that pretty much covers it. Thank you for watching.